Number one says match each sequence with one of the definitions. Note that only the part of the definition showing the relationship between the current term and the previous term is given so as to not give away the solutions. So let's take a look so they're not like giving us the first term, okay, so that we wouldn't be able to just look for these. So what we're trying to figure out here is what is happening. So are we adding something to each term? Are we multiplying by each term? Okay. Um, cause in, or, cause in this one, we're just multiplying by seven in this one, we're multiplying by one half to the previous term. And in this one, we're taking the previous term plus six. So that's what we're looking for. So this is multiplying by seven. This is multiplying by one half, which remember is the same as dividing by two. And this one is adding six. So if we take a look here for this one, this doubles, but it also adds six which is what we do here is add six. So this one is adding six to the previous term. That's number three. Okay, so this is rule number three. This one, two to 14 is times by seven because now we're down to seven or a half. 14 times seven is 98. So this one is multiplying by seven, which is rule number one. And that leaves C to be rule number two which is having the term each time. So half of 160 is 80, half of 80 is 40, and so on. Number two, write the first five terms of each sequence. Determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, meaning adding or subtracting, or geometric, which is multiplication or division, or neither. So this first one says that we have a starting term of seven, then we're going to take, remember, this just means previous term. So this means previous term minus 3. So now we're just going to minus 3 each time. So this is going to be um, arithmetic when we do it. Okay, so we're just going to take 7, and then we're going to do 7 minus 3, which is 4, 4 minus 3, which is 1, 1 minus 3, which is 2, and negative two minus three, which is negative five. And then this is arithmetic. So I'm just gonna put an A for arithmetic. Next one um, starts with B equals two, and then we're doing two times the previous term. Okay, so we're starting with two, then we're doing two times two, okay, is four. So then we're doing two times four, which is eight and then two times eight, which is 16, and two times 16, which is 32. Repeated multiplication is a geometric sequence. Part C, we're starting with three, so our first term is three, and then we're doing 10 times the previous term. So we're doing 10 times three, which is 30, 10 times 30, which is 300, 10 times 300, which is 3,000, 10 times 3,000, which is 30,000. Repeated multiplication is geometric. And then finally, we have our first term is one. And then we're gonna take N, which is our term number. Okay, so this is our term number and we're gonna multiply the term number times the previous term. Okay, so for ones like this, I like to write out the term number underneath um, where it's gonna go. So this is term one, so this is term two, term three, term four, and term five. So we're gonna do term number times the previous term. So we're gonna do two times one, which is two, here we're gonna do three times two, which is six, four times six, which is 24, and then five times 24, which is 120. Oh, and then this is neither um, geometric nor arithmetic because we did more than just multiplying or adding. Number three, the first 
the first five terms of a sequence are given, state the rule, um, and then that each sequence could follow. Okay, so this one we see two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is just going up by two each time. So the rule, okay, if we write it out the way that we learned in this lesson, okay, is going to be that your first term, okay, so your a sub one term is two. And then the rule for a sub n is going to be a sub n equals the previous term, meaning a sub n minus one, n being the term number and then adding two to that. And then this will be for n's that are greater than or equal to two, okay? Because they give us our first term, so then we're gonna be doing that at the second term. Okay, next one, we see five, seven, nine, 11, 13. So this is again adding two each time. So the only thing that changes in this rule is our a sub one term, okay? So our first term is five, then every subsequent term is the previous term, a sub n minus one plus two, and this is for n's that are greater than or equal to two. Next one here, we have 50 to 25, and then 25 to zero, zero to negative 25. So this one is subtracting 25 each time. So our first term, a of one, Okay, equals 50. Then each of our next terms, so a sub n equals the previous term, a sub n minus one, and then we're gonna subtract 25. So previous term minus 25 for every term two or higher. Since they give us the first one, we start at the second one. Okay, and then last one, um, we have one third to one. 1 to 3, 3 to 9, 9 to 27, okay? So this is multiplying by 3 each time. So the first term that they gave us was 1 third, so a of 1 is 1 third. Then every subsequent term is going to be the previous term, a sub n minus 1 times 3. And you can write it at the end here, or you can write it out front. And then this is going to be for every term two or higher. Number four, function f is defined by f of x equals 2x minus 7. And g is defined by g of x equals 5 to the x. Okay, so find each of these. So we're going to do f of 3. Okay, so if we do f of 3, that's going to be 2 times 3 minus seven, so that's six minus seven, or negative one. F of two means plug two in for x, so we're gonna do two times two minus seven, that's four minus seven, which is negative three. Then F of one, okay, which is two times one minus seven, so that's going to be 2 minus 7, which is negative 5. And you'll see that these are just going down by 2 each time because we're taking, we have this 2 times the x value. So as the x value goes down by 1, this output is going down by 2. So then 2 times 0 minus 7, 0 minus 7 is negative 7. So we kind of know that this next one is going to equal negative 9 because it's just down 2 each time. So 2 times negative 1 minus 7. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 7 is that negative 9. So then let's take a look at g. So now g of x, so g of 3 equals 5 to the third power. So then this is going to be 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. g of 2 is going to be 5 squared, so now it's only 5 times 5. So it's one less factor, okay, or a reduction by a factor of 5. So g of 1 is going to be 5 to the first, which is 5. g of 0 is going to be 5 to the 0, which is 1. And then g of negative 1 Okay, so each of these are divide by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5. Okay, divide by 5. This is going to be 1 fifth. 
Number five, here's the graph of two sequences. Um, complete the table for each one, okay? So we can see that sequence A is starting at zero, negative one. So it's this triangular one since it starts down here at negative one. So then at one, this one is at two. So when we look at an X value of one, the Y value is two. When we look at two, the Y value is five. When we look at three and we find this, the Y value is eight. Four, the Y value is 11. And you probably see the pattern by now, it's just three higher. So this is gonna be 14 and 17. So then the other sequence B starts at one half. So zero, one half. So at one, it's at one. At two, it's at two. At three, it's at four. At four, it's at eight. So if you see, this is just doubling. So then this next one we know is gonna be at 16, which we can see. And then this six is off the grid, but we know that it's gonna be at 32. Um, part B says for sequence A, describe a way to produce the new term from the previous term. So just like we talked about in this one, let me actually do a different color. We see that this is plus three, plus three, um, plus three. So it's just gonna be the previous term um, plus three. And then for the next one, we said for sequence B, it was the previous term times by two. And then which of these is geometric? So that's gonna be sequence B because it's repeated multiplication. Since we multiply by two each time, so you have that growth factor of two.